Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises and glory to Yahweh. By Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Kakodash. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, the Living God. God. And His name it even means He exists. And Yahweh Shah's name is the only begotten Son, who the word only calls Jesus Christ. And His name it even means He is a liver. By Hashem is in the name, Rikakodash, the Holy Spirit. I'm going to give honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone as well. Peace and blessing unto the, shot, unto the sincere arguments push forth in the truth of the four corners of the earth. I want to say shalom to you, brothers, to keep pushing. Now, the double shalom to the Israelites that's looking like the other nations in the short white theme. I want to say shalom to you, brothers and sisters, as well. My name is Dewar from GMS Line, St. Louis Camp. And I'll come back at it in another video. And in this video, I'm entitled it. The Lord is giving you power, brothers. Use it wisely. The Lord is giving you power, brothers. Use it wisely. Okay. And I'm going to hop into the scriptures. So this is Ecclesiastes 2, chapter 1. It reads, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure. And make not haste in a time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away. That thou mayest be increased at the last end. Right? Because we come into this truth. Because um, the main reason why we're over here in Babylon is for a punishment. But, you know, the Lord done set us down and put us in captivity. But we about to come up out of that captivity, all right? And the Lord is about to set us on high. Okay, and we have to constantly endure because that's the reason why we're here. We're in, enduring, you know, so we can uh, receive that power. And what's that power is uh, knowledge because starting off with the chief knowledge right now that's in the earth is the knowledge of this truth. Okay, because, you know, this truth is our foundation. All right. So it's the very essence of our existence is this truth. Okay. The word of the Yahweh Bashmi the, the right doctrine. Okay? It says, Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient with our change to a lower state. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him, and he will help thee. Order that we are right and trust in him. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest ye fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him. And your reward shall not fail, right? Because the reward, that's the whole reason why we're here. You know, is uh, not only are we rep repenting for our sins, we're here for that reward. And what's that reward? It's going to be um, power over the nations, a new body. There's never going to sin. They don't have no sickness or no flaws. Okay, shit, we can't wait. All right. Um... What else? Uh, your choice woman. Okay, because that's another topic a lot of people don't want to talk about is uh, multiple wives. You know, because the Lord is going to bless us with that. Okay. Um, shit, we're going to ride in them chariots. Okay. Those multi-purpose vehicles that the Heavenly Father, um, you know, created. Okay. And if... You know, just a fun fact, you know, a, a cherry can go in the water. Okay, because there's been many uh, United States sailors that done said that they'd seen uh, flying saucers come out of the water. Okay, in which, you know, they're not flying saucers, but, you know, ch well, they are saucers, but they're chariots, okay? It's the vehicles of the Heavenly Father. Okay, it says... Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see that ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded, or that any abide in his fear and was forsaken, or whom did he or whom did he ever despise to call upon him? Right? And you know, nobody, because the Lord he always um He always came through. The Lord said he'd never leave or forsake us, you know. And even you know, we was uh, fucked up for the last um, four to five hundred years. The Lord was still here with us. You know, he just had to, uh, like that falling away had to come. 
Okay, and it's, it's all to f uh, fulfill prophecy. For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long and suffering, very pitiful, and forgive his sins and save it in time of affliction. Right? So, yeah, so he's full of compassion and mercy. Okay, because you have to know uh, the, the, the care of the riches of the Most High. Because, you know, like when you're going through shit, a lot of people might say, oh, it's the devil. You know, it's the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil, right? And well, yeah, it is the devil. The your physical counterpart on um on Earth is who uh, Esau, Edom. Okay, and you know, the spiritual demon Satan, of course. But, but, but you know, but ultimately, it's the heavenly Father because he gave Satan that power to to tempt you. Okay. Yeah, because it all boils down to belief. All right? You know, because believing is power. All right? Because we coming into a time like that's all we're going to have is, is our belief. Because the Lord is about to do some miraculous things. Okay? So this is Revelation 2 and 26. And he that overcometh and keep my works to the end, to him will I give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Right? And the Lord said he's gonna give you power over the nations. Because hey, you have to overcome. And what do you overcome? You overcome in this flesh. Okay, the desires of the flesh. You know, that's why it's important to deny yourself. You know, certain pleasures, because certain pleasures is not convenient for your walk. Okay, it's not convenient for your mission. Because, you know, as a man of the Lord, even as a woman of the Lord, your, your mission is to what? Is to get up out of here. Okay? Is to get beamed up. Okay? Whether you have to get um, put to death for this truth or if you have to get beamed up. You know, none of us know, but you have to prepare for both. Okay? Just in case. Because, hey, we don't know what our latter end going to be. Okay? Verse 27. He shall rule them with the rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter, so that he broke into shivers. You did not receive from my father, right? So he shall rule him with a rod of iron. Okay. Um, so yeah, the so Lord, you're going to give us power. Okay, all over the nations. Hey, that's a racist statement. <laughs> so what are the other nations, the, the other Gentiles? All right, so if you're not an Israelite, not on that sign, the 12 tribe sign, then hey, the kingdom of heaven is not for you. Okay, well, it's going to be for you, but, you know, you're going to be in chains in, in the kingdom of heaven. You know, you're going to be uh, you're going to be a servant. All right. All right, it says, and I will give him the morning star. If he didn't have an ear, let him hear what the spirit said to the churches. Right. So that morning star, what Lucifer. Okay. Um. Uh, just another word to say light bringer or illuminate because, you know, we're going to be a light, okay, in the next life, okay, yeah, the next world, you know, because uh, uh, Esau was all like, yeah, the new world, okay, and it's going to be a new world, all right, you know, when you uh, Edomites go into slavery, right on with the rest of you other nations, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a, uh, a, a, sh a super new world. A world like you never seen before, you know, because they all the things that Esau dreamed about, he put it in uh, movies like Star Wars and Star Trek and Predator, Alien, you know, um, that's going to become a reality, you know, going to different galaxies and different planets and all that. Uh, she actually going to the moon and um, yeah, and 144,000. Hey, we're going to all be on the moon. And guess what? We we're we gonna take a um you know, it's gonna be like a, a nice picture, you know. <laughs> hey, we, we actually gonna have um um you know different uh technology that's gonna be out of this world. Okay. Second so the book is second after chapter two and verse forty two. I Ezra saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. 
And in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest, and upon every one of their heads he set crowns, and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, What are these? He answered and said to me, These be they that have put off mortal clothing and put on the immortal, and have confessed the name of God. Right? So you hear that, Nate? The name of God. And what's the name? Yahweh. Okay, Yahweh, he is or he exists, and Yahweh Shai, he is deliverer. Okay, it says, Now are they crowned and receive palms. Then said I unto the angel, What young person is it that crowned them and giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered and said to me, It is the son of Yahweh. Um, they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Then the angel said unto me, Go thy way and tell my people what manner of things and how great wonders of the Lord thy God that was seen. Right? So kind. So Yahweh Shah is going to give us some uh, crowns. You know, if we part of those numbers, you know. And yeah, that's the reason why we're here. You know, like that crown is, uh, you know, represents what? Rulership, power. Okay? Because, Lord, hey, he's making you into the perfect judge now. That's the reason why he's taking you through all this. So, um, you know, that's the reason why you're going through so much with women. You know, because a lot of brothers don't have a woman or a lot of brothers have been through a lot with a certain woman. You know? So you got to be able to spot all the red flags you got to be able to um, to decipher, is this woman marriage material? Cause this one, does this woman fit me? Yes or no? You know, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Um, and then, you know, that's just on a lower scale. Like, you know, you got to figure out, like, what's good for you and what, and what ain't, you know? And, uh, yeah, it's a journey. It's a process to be able to figure that out. Okay, and that goes with a uh, what trial and error. Okay, and yeah, you gotta know how to treat a woman. Okay, cause you know you got a lot of brothers. You know, cause uh, you know us here, most of we don't hate women. Okay, um, yeah, we know you women are out, are, out, are out of order, and a lot of you women you hate men. You know, you compare yourself to men. Everything you do is based off the the. The premise of the opinion of a man. Okay. But yeah. Um, you have to know how to treat a woman, man. Okay. Because, uh, you know, you, you might find yourself doing a chick dirty. That's, that wasn't even, that didn't even deserve it. You know, because you done thought, you know, like you overthought something. Because, you know, hey, because we damaged. Because, you know, all of us damaged, man. All of us. You know, we all have certain mental issues and. Self esteem, self esteem issues that we dealing with, hey, but we all overcoming that, okay? We all overcoming that. You know how to deal with your children, uh, deal with these other nations, man. Like not giving your brother, your brother, your daughter, your uh, sister, your wife, son power over you, okay? This is Luke chapter 12. Let's start at 32. It says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Right? Not fair, I started at 31. It says, But rather seek you the kingdom of Yahweh, and all these things shall be added unto you. For not, little flock, for it is your father's a good pleasure to give you the kingdom, right? So, all right, you got to seek the kingdom. And everything going to be added unto you, all right? All right, so, yeah, don't don't worry about a woman. Don't worry about none of that shit. Because um, all of it is going to be added unto you. You know, you're going to get a hundredfold. 
And like Peter asked, yeah, how shall you? Like, what shall we get? You know, we're going to get everything. And then some. Okay. So the main thing your brothers out there should be focused on is uh, getting this knowledge. Okay. Because, you know, there's not much time left. Okay. Like we literally are, are living in the last days. Hey, it could be months. You know, weeks, months. Okay. But yeah, it's going to happen. No, we're not going to be able to, and we're not going to uh, deal with this shit no more. And so, yeah, this this what you should pray for. You should pray for uh, what King Solomon prayed for. Now, if you know anything about the scriptures, you know that uh, our Lord and our Savior is King Solomon. Is Yahweh Shah, just in another life. Okay, so this is the Book of Kings, chapter 1. Salakia. It's the book of First Kings, chapter three and verse five, and it reads, "And Gibeon the Lord appeared unto Solomon in a dream by night, and Yahweh said and asked, What I shall give thee? What shall I give thee? What I shall give thee?" And Solomon said, "Thou hast shown unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth." And in righteousness and an uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept him from this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which Thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. But who is able to judge this thy so great a people? All right, so yeah, this is what Solomon prayed for. And he uh, prayed for wisdom. Okay, and the speech praised the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And Yahweh said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself a long life, neither has asked riches for thyself, nor has asked the life of thy enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding and, and to discern judgment. Oh, I have done according to thy works. I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither, neither after thee, shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that thou hast not asked both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And that thou will walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and offer up burnt offerings and offer peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. Right? And yeah, so the Lord answered his prayers. Okay? And I'm going to finish off the rest of this chapter, you know, just to give you brothers and sisters a visualization of his wisdom. Then came two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. And the one said, O oh my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also, and we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we were in the house, save we two in the house. And this woman's child died in, in in the night because she overlaid it and she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thy handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom and when I rose in the morning to get my child suck behold it was dead when I had considered it in the morning behold it was not my son which I did bear and the other woman said nay but the living is my son and the dead is thy son and this said no but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son, right? That's going back and forth. 
Thus they spake before the king. Then said the king, the one, the one said, This is my son liveth, and thy son is dead. And the other said, Nay, but thy son is dead, and my son is the living. <laughs> so like you. And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought the sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two and give half to one and half to the other. Then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king for her bowels yearned upon her son. And she said, Oh my lord, give her the living child, and in no while I slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine or thine, but divide it. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no while I slay it. She is the mother thereof. And all Israel heard, heard the judgment which the king had judged. And they feared the king, for they saw the wisdom of Yahweh was in him to do judgment, right? So yeah, so he basically, um, you know, it was, you know, it was, it was like psychology. So so he had to see, you know, like who who actually loved the child, you know, to see who the mother was, because you know, a mother have care over her over her young ones that coming from between her feet. You know, that's even part of the curses, you know. It's the total opposite of that now. Now she don't give a damn. But it just goes to show you, you know, uh, like how far women then came down. But, you know, I ain't talking about women right now. But, you know, just talking about uh, wisdom. Because, yeah, there's going to be many matters like that, like where we're going to have to uh, judge. You know, so brothers, get ready for that. You know, so, yeah, start practicing now. All right. And that's all I have on that. And I want to say shalom.